jump in. Hey, let's just see. Um, wow, thank you everybody for joining. Now, um, Sole, are you recording this yet? I just started recording right now, one second ago. Um, I will start uh, live on YouTube. Yeah, do that. So this is kind of an experiment, you know, we're all in a lockdown and, and cabin fever and everything else. And so like a week ago, I said, I want to do that. And in the intervening week, I got so busy, I didn't want to do it anymore. But, um, but we're all here. So a couple of things. Um, if you open up the chat, if you can open up the chat, there's a Google Doc. And our question was, how do we, how do we moderate for some unknown random number of people you know, that could be between five people and a hundred people. And so we made this Google doc and in the Google doc, it's got space. Everybody can write in. Um, and it's got our agenda and all the rest. So I have that uh, Google doc open here so I can see. Uh, and then we decided to do a YouTube live link and, um, we'll probably like try to do this as a weekly thing. Uh, so first of all, I guess, let me see this, start, start. Uh, the theme is obviously going to be the heart of Agile and our theme inside of that is gonna be the heart of Agile communities and um, surrounding all of that is all this virus stuff going on. So here's what uh, we did in the, um, in the Google Doc. Uh, there's a picture of the heart of Agile with a couple of words added onto there that you'll see uh, dialogue humanity and openness which we'll get to there's the agenda that we have in mind nine parts um and because everybody wants to on the one sense we're occupied by this virus thing in the lockdown and and the other hand we don't want to talk only about that so actually as an experiment i want to try uh quite an extended check-in procedure um and some people speaking and maybe everybody writing in the Google Doc, so check in three parts, um, and then just a little bit about Heart of Agile communities, and then open questions. You know, ask anybody anything, um, and then a, a, a three-step close down on that. So I have enough screen, so I'll flip back and forth between those two and watching you guys. And we have forty participants right now, Alistair, from all over the world. Fantastic, and uh, we have a couple of people. Uh, from from Australia where it's 2 a.m. Can all the people from Australia wave? I see one, two people waving on my screen as much as I can see anything. Thank you very much. Oh, that's Tony Pontan is there. Um, he sure is. Yeah. Well Phil as, wouldn't get out of bed, unfortunately. Sorry. Um, <laughs> he, can turn on, he can turn on the camera in bed. It's fine. We don't <laughs> mind seeing him in his pajamas and leaning up against the pillows. It's like all the same. And With Kate, his cufflinks. Yeah, yeah. Kate, thank you very much. Um, now, one other thing. we So inside this group of all the people, we have quite a lot of people who are already active organizing Heart of Agile communities. And we have a good uh, number of people who are here who are from Latin America. Can all of the people who are from Latin America wave your hands? All the Spanish-speaking people. Ah, Gerardo, uh, placer. And uh, Sola, you can maybe coach me. Um, I can't get 40 people on my screen and I don't see like a next, next. Uh, to the screen. left and your right on the, on the both side of your screen should be mm -hmm. one third. I got it. I'm in a one half. So I got, I got it. I see it. Thank you. There you go. And that helps me <clears throat> see the other people. Sweet. We Nicola, are live on Facebook right yeah, now. Perfect. Oh, yeah. Nicola, bon de te voir, c'est super. So we have that. The thing about the Latin America is we had our annual community meeting about a year ago, less than a year ago. And we had like half of the people, almost over, over a third, almost half the people were from Latin America. So we ran the whole two day global gathering bilingual. And, and that was interesting to do. And when I say bilingual, everything that was said by anybody was translated into the other language. Um, and so we, we signed up for the fact that you just go half speed when you do that. Um, but, but we wanted to make from a sure from a point of view of, of inclusiveness, 
that the people who didn't speak such strong English didn't get mowed over by everybody speaking English. And we ran, actually facilitated one in Spanish so all the English speakers would feel like what it feels like to get the second translations, you know, of things. So if anybody here um, uh, specifically for Spanish uh, just feels like you want to write or speak in Spanish, we have enough people here, they'll do that translation for you um, in the other direction. We won't translate everything English to Spanish, but anybody who wants to speak in Spanish. And Sola, can you say that roughly speaking, that last part in Spanish for the Spanish people who didn't understand what I said? Um, vamos a hablar uh, mayormente en inglés, pero si alguien quiere hablar en castellano o hacer preguntas en castellano o en español, uh, no hay ningún problema, la pueden hacer igual um, a viva voz o a través del chat. Perfect, thank you. That sounds so romantic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now let's look at the, so let's do this, let's run down the agenda and test it out. Um, the idea here is that two parts of the check-in, and this is borrowed from, uh, uh, somebody will tell me what's his name, um, Software for Your Head by, um, what's his name, I forgot. Um, where you check in and he would say, I'm mad, glad, sad, whatever my emotion is, and I'm in. And because in a sense, we're all like fully occupied by this virus thing, I split this into two parts and I'd like some people to speak it out loud. And if we don't have enough time or people don't want to actually say it out loud, we've got that little three column spreadsheet and it goes in, in two parts. We'll do two full rounds or we'll just see how long that takes, you know, to go through. Um, and, and here's the first thing, not about me, but around me, I'm happy uh, we have that. a couple of people uh, from Sorry, what? That was somebody speaking? No, that was your echo. Oh, wow. On Facebook Live. <laughs> <laughs> All righty, cool. <laughs> Just very continue, good. Alistair. Thank you very much. So not for me, but around me, I am happy that, and just finish the sentence and do not give any explanations. Um, I am sad that, and I am hopeful okay. for, right? So I'll start and I'll ask, um, you know, the four of us who organized it to just do this, right? And then we'll just go boom, 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 boom around, okay? Um, not for myself, but I am happy to see the amount of community volunteer spirit happening around me. I am sad that people I know personally and millions more that I don't know personally who are in gig economy, high touch professions and living by the skin of their teeth, um, literally like are worried about how to buy food. I am hopeful that we will uh, escape from this madness sooner than predicted, hopefully by like uh, mid June. That's my turn. Somebody next? And let's just rotate it around. And those of you, you can fill in that three column table. Um, I can actually start, Alistair. Um, Kate from Melbourne. Can I say that? Okay, cool. Um, I am happy that I realized how blessed I was before this coronavirus attacked me. I had my health, I had my uh, food. No explanations, health. please. Had... Just, okay, just, cool. just the one sentence. Thank you. And I'm sad to notice people suffering from this virus globally. And I am hoping that these incidents give us better understanding of humanity and how to assist each other and supporting each other. Somebody? I'll go. I am happy that we have the internet and that we can be connected from so many different places at so many different times and yeah. see each other in person. Um, I'm sad that 
that we're that as a world we're not yet to the point of being able to address this virus as humanity and that there is politics and other other things that are coming into play i'm hopeful that the value of people is what prevails that it doesn't matter if you're a janitor or a nurse or that there's a little bit more leveling and i'm really hopeful for that somebody else i can go next uh, it's Laurent in North Carolina. I'm very happy for everybody here, not for myself, but a little bit for myself, that Alistair and his team has created this opportunity for us. I am sad that um, I have to get off this call because I'm leading a workshop. And I'm very hopeful that everybody in the world, including everybody on this call, might become more introspective, uh, intuitive, um, tuned to what's important as a result of all this suffering. George. So I'm happy that this catastrophe is triggering so many virtual gatherings of people supporting each other. <clears throat> I'm sad that this is affecting so many people so badly, health-wise, economically, and emotionally. And I'm, I hope that we will come out of this with more empathy and care for each other. I'll go. Um, I'm happy that my family and friends so far are well and safe. Um, I'm sad for the fear and confusion that it's causing my children and having to try to explain to them how this is going to end up and how I provide for them. And, and lastly, I'm hopeful it'll be over soon and, and that my wife is safe is because she's one of those on the front line. Jerry? Yeah. Uh, I'm happy to see... Uh so much resilience around me. Uh, I'm sad. It's a, it's a very hard time for people caring of others in hospital. It's a hard time. And I'm hopeful that uh, afterwards uh, we remember how we cope with all this and uh, we have seen the very important things. And I'm hopeful that we don't uh, forget about all this. Maybe one more. Because I see the, the, the sheet, if you open up the Google Docs and it's hard to flip, but if you have a big screen, you can do that. A lot of think, writing in there, that's good to write. I think Augustine on. wanted to say something. Augustine. Feliz porque estamos en una fase de aprendizaje. Estamos aprendiendo de un mundo nuevo. Translate that right there. Uh, he's happy because we are in a, in a learning uh, phase of transitioning to a new world. Sí. Uh, he's sad because of his family and uh, about uh, what the uh, authorities are going to, all the uh, measures or policies that authorities are going to put in place. In the future. Sí, y estoy esperanzado de, de esta comunidad, de que, de que esta comunidad nos sirva para, para lograr hacer un cambio. And he has hope that uh, on this community that it will help us uh, make a plan uh, for change, uh, to do some good change. Okay, now, second part of the check-in, and I understand <laughs> this is taking time, but it seems to me this is like, this is weighing on us. The same thing, but it has to be about you personally, not about anybody else, but you personally. So, uh, same scratch pad, same sentence. Um, about me specifically, I'm, I'm happy that I actually have a really nice place to stay. Uh, my friends are safe. And I actually have work assignments that are supposed to be keeping me occupied. So for me, I'm, I'm happy with my current situation. I'm sad that I don't get to go dancing because those of you guys who know me, dancing is my outlet. Can't explain, sorry. Sad, I can't get to go dancing. And I'm, I'm hopeful um, for me, I'm hopeful that I'll get into a routine and do the shit I'm supposed to do, I was supposed to do anyway. So that's my happy, sad, and hopeful for me personally. 
Somebody want to pick up a, the personal version of this? I can go. I can. Cheryl? Go ahead. Yes, please. Uh, this is Cheryl from New York, Ground Zero. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm happy because being an Agilist, we are well versed in remote um, gatherings and stuff. So I actually started a new job this Monday uh, remotely. So that was a, a very happy moment for me. Um, I'm sad over the fact that I feel we as a world were not ready to handle this, even though these sorts of things happen like every hundred years. And I don't Cheryl, feel like Cheryl, I'm going to interrupt you. That was about the world that wasn't about you. What are you oh, sad okay. about for you personally? That about for me, I miss the closeness of working with my team members. I'm a scrum master, so I like being with my team and around my team, and I miss seeing them on a daily basis. And I haven't even gotten a chance to meet my new team face-to-face -face yet since I just started okay. Monday. And hopeful for you? Um, I am hopeful that organizations that I'm involved with take some lessons learned from the remote uh, possibilities and start incorporating them more. And that's not about you, so what are you hopeful no. about for you? Guys, I facilitate like this all the time. So, like, if you know me, you just know this is normal, right? Huh. I don't know. Actually, I'm not sure on that one. I you don't, don't have to answer. Know. Anybody can pass on anything. Thanks okay. for illustrating I'll pass that. on that one. Thanks. Uh, I would like to go next. Answer. Hi, everybody. This is Nupur from Mumbai, India. And my hello to all of you. And, and about me, oh, <clears throat> So I've recently moved to a new city in India, that is Mumbai, which is very populated. And my welcome has been very nice. I mean, there is other side to it also because I can, uh, there's no pollution. I can see stars in the sky and I can hear birds chirping in the morning. That is one side of it. Other thing is me and my newly married okay, husband. Okay, Nupur, in Nupur, right? I'm happy for i'm sad that i'm hopeful for okay we got the happy now the sad mm -hmm. for now, you now personally the, yeah for me personally is um that it, it looks like it, um my room has become more more of a call center so i'm mostly working on calls i'm mostly on video chats and and trying to figure out how it can be more effective i, I can feel that it's not as effective as the um as, as going to office right now i'm trying to cope up with that okay are you hopeful for any particular thing what, what could you be hopeful for for you personally uh, i'm hopeful for uh, being better at work like this because uh, i think i'm somewhere helping my environment to get better <laughs> okay thank you hey lucy is in um lucy burns is in edinburgh are you game to play lucy it's not like I'm, I'm going to call on you or anything. I'm just going to call on you. But you can say pass, of course. I might break, but yeah. No, I'm happy that my kids are here and, and um, we're all healthy. I'm sad that my husband's not by my side. That's good. That's fine. Thank you so much. Exactly what Carol just did. Thank you, Lucy, for being here. Um, anybody else? And we've got the, the spreadsheet. Go ahead and, and write in the. Sole was going to start. Gerardo. This is Gerardo from Buenos Aires in Argentina. Uh, hey there. Um, I'm happy for having a nice, comfortable place to stay with my family during the storm. I'm sad because I didn't get any stuff for doing my woodworking hobby at home. So I cannot do that. And I am uh, hopeful for uh, uh, the storm is over. One more. Sola, are you game? Um, I'm happy uh, because the, this, the four day in a row, the sun in Belgium <laughs> is in my face. <laughs> I'm happy for that. Um, I'm sad um, because I cannot go out as much as I would like to. And um, I'm hopeful that uh, <clears throat> we will get to this all together soon, sooner than, than expected. 
So the last part of the, of the and it's not a check-in, it's actually part of the thing, is uh, what are you doing to keep yourself sane in this time, right? So again, um, we just have a plain text field down there, part three, what am I doing to keep myself sane? Um, some people are already writing, someone's knitting, um, someone's getting into half-started personal projects, uh, someone's doing exercise on, uh, and, and so on. Uh, what I'm doing to stay sane is we're not under under curfew here in Florida, so I drive out to see the sunset. <clears throat> the beaches are closed, but there's a place on the road where I can sit on the wall legal and fully distant from everybody and watch the sunset. And so I take pictures of the sunset every night, and that's how I keep myself sane. Somebody else? I'm I'm planting. And for me, planting has therapeutic value. Seeing something come up from a seed, even though 90% of my seeds don't come up, they're too wet or something, but planting and watching things grow, especially things that are going to be flourishing in two or three months. And I've talked to, I talked to Lucy, she said her garden is just starting to thrive. And between that and baking bread, I think those are the two probably most common common things that people are starting to do is either planting seeds or even growing carrots out of the, the top of a carrot. That's what keeps me sane. A couple more. <clears throat> Hi. Uh, per Moina, I'm from uh, Oslo, Norway. Hello. Hey. Good Hi. Fint. <laughs> yeah. Good nice to see you all again. Uh, yeah, to keep myself sane, I'm uh, starting to learn how to make yeah, sourdough bread. So the baking part is uh, one new project for me, and uh, and reading books, um, trying to learn new stuff, and uh, yeah, that's been mostly what I've uh, been trying. George, hi. Uh, I am actually after seven years playing Dungeons and Dragons with my friends from Croatia online. Oh, that's cool. Can we, join you. Can join we you. play? Yeah, can we play? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Georgia, you may find yourself the, the dungeon master for a group from, from this call. <laughs> hey, um, I, didn't, I didn't put in there Sola or, or Carol or somebody who, or Georgia, can you go to the bottom of, the, of our shared document? And anybody wants to make a three column table, uh, first name, last name, email, or, or Facebook, or WhatsApp, make it four columns. Oh, I can email. start that. Good, four columns, first name, or just three columns. La the name, sorry, name, email, and WhatsApp phone number. If you want to like get messages and like exchange community stuff and start a D&D &D and whatnot, okay? Thank you. So you guys can go down to the bottom of the document and fill that in. You know, like any of you who want to maybe trigger Georgia into, into doing a... Done. Cool, cool. Someone else? By the way, that's my first aha and takeaway from this session. I just got my first aha and takeaway from this session. Hey. Oh, different. Oh, sorry. This is Rob's. Cheryl again. Okay, Ro Cheryl and then Rob. I've been uh, using virtual reality to visit sites that I uh, would not be able to visit now as a result of our uh, lockdown here. So that's been kind of interesting. Thank you. Uh, we just had an extension finished, so I am making it look pretty with paint and kitchen and other such things. All right, gang. <coughs> that's, that's the check-in protocol and it took about 20 minutes to do. Uh, the tension that we're running here is, you know, like the, the virus thing is on all of our mind. Um, but in a sense, we want to get escape from that and talk about something else. Uh, so we have banned topics, no politics, no policies, and no predictions. Um, I'm not epidemiologist uh, or anything like that. So uh, it's no venting about the politics and the politicians, please. No predictions, it's going to go up or down, right? None of that kind of stuff. That's not what we're here for. The long extended check-in procedure is to allow everybody to get something out about the current situation so that we can yeah, move on to other topics. Is that okay? Good. Uh, Georgia, are you um, able to make that background behind you fill your screen in any particular way or just duck your head down so everybody can read it? 
right? Yeah, that's the center part. Just like, yeah, there you go. Thank you very much. That's perfect. So <laughs> Georgia is going to pass the rest of the time like that. No, that's, that's sweet. Thank you very much. Uh, so all of you, uh, I guess I should ask, does anybody here not know anything about Heart of Agile? So I don't want to. Uh, Brett Palmer. Yeah. So what I've heard it? of it. I've seen, I've seen it a little bit, but I'm not, I haven't gotten the spiel yet. Good, good. And, and Gerardo, how can you not know anything about Heart of Agile, given that we shared like a couple of beers and the must have, topic must have come up? But okay. So what I'm going to do is say not much about the Heart of Agile, um, but then get into the communities, which is something interesting for us. Um, so for Brett and, and anybody who like literally, psh, you, like what's this Heart of Agile thing? Um, about five years ago, I was challenged by Craig Brown uh, to do something new. And, and what I chose to do was a radical simplification of Agile into just four words. And then we find out that it actually has nothing specially to do with Agile. It for sure has nothing specially to do with uh, uh, software, uh, nothing to do with products. It has to do with initiatives of all kinds. And it generally is about how do teams become effective in achieving an outcome in, in any domain, anything, any initiative. So like I'm writing the book on this and I had to get rid of the word project and product and talk about initiatives and what you deliver are decisions that are made manifest in, you know, pronouncements and ads and products and things and you're attempting to change the world. Uh, right. And, and so these four words, are like so screamingly general they don't even belong to the agile community anymore right it's, and, and i had a had a choice i was um of actually literally calling it teamwork 2.0 or the work of teams or something like that or leaving it with the agile tag and um somebody said said don't try to socialize a new term double down on agile and so it's the heart of agile right that's that's and, and that's all you need to know. It's in fact all you need to know because you collaborate to deliver, you reflect to improve, right? And you reflect on all of those four things and you improve all of those four things. Um, the reason you have to deliver is because you have to get feedback from the world. It's not one delivery at the end. Because we're delivering decisions, we make decisions, errors in decision making at the rate of one in five or one in 10. Uh, from the very first thing, when you first say, I'd like to change the world in the following way. I'd like people to recycle, you know, use solar, boil water, buy my product, you know, hire me, whatever. The, the moment you state what your intention is, you've made decisions. Your, your first statement of intent contains between probably three and five decisions, which means already one is wrong, right? Your intention is already misstated and you, by definition, don't know. So you multiply out from there through all the tens or hundreds or thousands of people working on any initiative, anything they deliver into the world, whether it's a piece of software, whether it's a product, whether it's a marketing brochure, whether it's a strategy analysis, whether it's an advertising campaign, anything is nothing more than the concretization of decisions. Everything you do, right? And if you say people are making errors in decision-making at the rate of one in five, one in 10, then you see how, Earlier, you have to find the errors so you don't do all the work building on a bad decision and then have to unroll that to back up and then, right? You see the point. So the deliver part is about delivering and probing the world, touch the world. You have to literally touch the world to find those errors. So the deliver is to find those errors as well as, you know, incremental rollout, stage delivery, you know, staged ROI, all of the, all of the financials the the big thing is discovering errors so uh so you you collaborate why it's good to know why we do these things you collaborate to get better initial ideas you collaborate because you can break the mis you break the mistakes quicker if you just say something to somebody and they said that doesn't work because right so you break the decision and you raise the morale of the team by collaboration that's why we collaborate and you deliver to find those mistakes early to get the real feedback. Plus, you get early value from putting those probes and you mix, you know, probe, test, value, pop, 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 pop. And then you're steering to try to get some improved change in the world. 
And then reflect is separated from improve because we don't typically take time to stop and reflect. So in Scrum, it's inspect and adapt and Crystal's reflective improvement. I separate it and really mean stop and reflect and then improve, you know, and so on. And what's interesting with only having the four words and nothing else is it doesn't, um, it, it doesn't inhibit new invention. It doesn't impose, it doesn't impose anything on you. And so people are discovering new techniques, new methods, new ideas, because you can, anything that improves collaboration is already an improvement, okay? Et cetera, any form of delivery, any, anything, anything. It's so open that um, in, in Australia, um, what's it, World Vision is a, is a nonprofit help a thingy, and they did a, a joint project with Red Cross, and Jordana, is her last name, Peterson? Uh, said that that she got that accepted by her bosses because it was it was so simple in general they couldn't object to anything like they were all set to object to it's too software it's too this too that but it's so general that they could they could use it right so that's heart of agile now um, I lost my view of Georgia and his but it's in the document anyway so there's Georgia so what um, what uh, Sole went and, and, and did was to add three more words. So, so focus, either look in the document, you can see it in the document, or Georgia, if you'd lie down again, please, so we can see it. Love that. Um, Sola added these three words. We had, a, we had a, a, you know, it's kind of a visioning session in which we said, what is it we actually care about inside the community? Um, and and one of the things that's super important for us is to keep a kind of an openness in the dialogue. Um, to the, the idea of listening and hearing and being generous in the listening um, is super important to us at, the love, at every level we do socially. So there's the heart of Agile, which is like an engine, right? It just turns da 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 But we wanted to amplify that, that core to the community aspect is this idea of people who are like open to listen, open to ideas. So we have this idea of openness that's core. The idea that uh, somebody asked me years ago, what should I tell my boss? I consult to executives. The executives want me to tell them what they should tell their employees. So Alistair, tell me what I should tell the execs they should tell their employees, right? And I said, no, that's not going to happen. I'm not going to tell anything and you're not going to tell the exec anything and the exec's not going to tell the workers anything. Um, we're going to dialogue. We're going to discuss, right? I will dialogue with you about how you dialogue with your exec about your exec dialogues with the workers uh, because this is the, the, the nature of what we're doing. It's an ongoing inquiry and dialogue. And so we, that's been there since the beginning and we kind of formalized this now for the communities so we've got communities, if any of you want to set one up or if you want to join one, we have communities. There's, where's Dave? He's the, David Wallace. He's, wave, David. Wave. Good. He's organizing in, in Boulder. Sola is organizing in uh, Brussels. Georgia's organizing in Serbia. Carol's organizing in Florida. Augustine's organizing in Santiago. Jerry's organizing in Paris. Rob's organizing in Edinburgh. Who did I leave out? Who's here on the screen? Tony's organizing in Brisbane. Kate. Oh. <laughs> Kate? From Melbourne. <laughs> Are you organizing in Melbourne? Not yet, but you just mentioned all the names. Like, so I was like, okay, I'm, I'm in the screen as well. I'm watching you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but these are the organizers who are already organizing mm. meetups, not just people yep. who are like, so, so you can join because uh, they desperately need a woman in the team. Yes. Is Jordana on the team yet? Supposed no, to would be. love to join. Yes. Yeah, it's Kate, please do contact uh, Tony or Craig or, or anybody or Solo or anybody. We have a we adopted a rule a while ago, and I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of harangue the Australians here for a moment, because why not? <laughs> well, it's, yeah, it's just usual. Yeah, 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 but but, <laughs> but Phil's not there. Um, so yeah. we we adopted a rule for pretty obvious reasons that someone said we wanted to start it. We said we need a man and a woman from two different companies, um, and that's our, our minimum diversity criteria for starting a meetup group. 
And I noticed that in Australia, we've got seven male organizers and no women on there at all. And that's been like for three years, like, and I harass them periodically, like, why don't you have women on that, on that group? So Kate, if you would get involved, that would be like super wonderful. We'd love to have you sure thing. reach out. Thank you. Oh, that would be great. Good, good. If we Especially get Kate, in Melbourne, reach out to Phil. I'll make sure he reaches out to you. So if you guys Absolutely. have your emails in the, in the table at the end, you'll be in contact, right? That'll be super. Sure. And if Jordana's on there, we'll, get, we'll have two, and I'll just be able to relax. So that's the addition, that's the addition of those, those three words. And when we expand out, because we're going to do, people ask, how can I be a consultant on this? How can I be an instructor on this? Um, and we don't know how to do the consultant thing yet, but we've, we've about got work certificates and instructions and, and I'll talk about that if you guys like I'm watching the time also. Um, it's like hiring somebody, you know, like at a company like, you know, Google or someplace. Uh, we're very focused on trying to get people with a certain kind of a tone, a certain behavioral mode, um, a certain attitude of this thing, openness, dialogue and humanity inside of there um, and so it might be that somebody is qualified to teach but uh, you know just like if you apply at a team and you get vetoed people say no I've worked with that person before right they're really really obnoxious or whatever uh, then then you wouldn't get in so inside of our future plans as we're as we're growing this one day there will be a commercial model for this which at the moment there isn't um, this thing about about the personality of the group is the single most important thing to me is that the community all the people who are participating have this quality of of being in dialogue of of, of openness so, so we added these three words um for the communities and i'm glad to get a chance to say that i i sometimes forget to mention that but that's like for me personally the most important thing about the community is retaining this this tone the personality all right, that's enough. That's like too much me babbling. Let's go for questions, if that's okay. Let's go and see what we have here for questions. Hmm. There's that. Okay, so uh, you can write a question in the table or you could just ask and I will ask for the other like people in the Heart of Agile community that offer in their thoughts on whatever your question is. Anybody have a question or a topic you'd like to start with? So, you know, Alistair, we have 49, 40, 49 people. It's been up to 50 um, from just about everywhere. And this, it's really exciting to listen to this and see people's comments and private chat messages that are going back and forth all over the place. Thank you. Hey, Scott, thank you. Who's got a topic for us? I'm, I'm tired of talking. Yes, sir. Uh, it's Sean. Um, yeah. Where are you from? Um, Where are you sitting, Sean? Uh, I'm uh, in Manchester, England, um, and we're part of the uh, booking team with about four to 600 product engineering guys. Uh, we all went remote in the last week and a half. So one of the challenges that we're facing as a coaching team is how do we do that as coaches? Uh, how do we coach remotely and how do teams work remotely in the new ways of working? So I guess my question is in the context of Heart of Agile, how, does, how do you guys think about coaching remotely? Is it, uh, does it change your practices a little bit? Is it, how does it apply? I am the not qualified person to speak on that one. So, I'll take uh, any answers from anybody. Any thoughts? Um, I'll, I'll jump in. I've been doing this for a while. Uh, as Alistair, Alistair knows, I was on a very, very large program with about 600 people, three different countries. So the, the advice I always offer if you're going to try and do this sort of stuff is you have to over plan everything that you do over accentuate that you do. So collaborate more than you ever have in, in as many different little ways as you can and think about all the different ways you can pull them into collaborating things that you wouldn't normally do. Um, and this, the, the same for any of those pieces to that, you know, your reflection, 
how can I get them to, to reflect? Because you're not going to be able to see body language. You're not going to see people the way you would normally see them. So you need to drag them in and do lots of different things, use lots of different techniques to make sure everybody's included. I'll offer one thought while maybe one of the other um, coaches on here is thinking. We have a distributed community. The Heart of Agile community is, is distributed by definition. Um, and so I've written about that in my books. You know, what's the theory of, of all this stuff? And the answer is technology is your friend and you're trying to simulate uh, what they call in uh, presence and awareness. So like here, I've got all of you. I, I wish I could have all 40 on the screen at the same time, but you can. Get, I, you, I can how? Uh, we'll, we'll talk for next meeting and I'll show you how to do it. Okay. I mean, if it's quick, just tell me and I'll just do it. Up in the upper right hand, do you see all the people along the top of your screen? No. Everybody listed? Okay. Then, then I'll tell you later because okay. it won't Good. work. Thank you very much. Cool, cool, cool. But anyway, I'm watching all of you, right? So I have, an, for all of the people that I can see, I've, I've got a presence and awareness, you know, like Rob's got, you know, his kid sitting with him, right? And, and I see, you know, some people are like this and some are like that. This is, a, this is part of, of presence and awareness. So, so I would, if I was literally working with everybody, I would have this up all the time. So you could see if someone's at their desk or if they're busy or if they're on a call or whatever, right? You can, you can, you can read the body language in these little thumbnails. So that's part one. So technology is your friend. Well, so what we're doing then is to use, uh, we have a private uh, YouTube channel for those of us who are in the, the organizing community. And uh, uh, thanks to actually Rob calling Damon. So Rob in, in Edinburgh was gonna start uh, a community and, and Damon in Melbourne had started a community and for sure I never thought of this, but I don't know what, what, which one of them thought of it, it was awesome. Um, so Rob called Damon and said, hey, tell me how you do your community on Zoom. And they recorded it and said, hey, we have a recording of this. And we went, oh my God, that's like perfect. So now all of our discussions that we do um, are on Zoom and recorded and we have a private YouTube channel where we post them. What we're trying to do is to get everybody to see the body language of everybody else, right? So that's important for us. And, and we have another one. If you start, uh, Brett, where are, you, where are you sitting, Brett? I'm in California at home. Good. So well, let's just say, you know, uh, Brett or Cheryl, you decide to start a Heart of Agile community just for the sake of argument. So step one, you go get a male and a female, two different companies, right? The immediate next thing we're going to do is to ask you to get on a Zoom call with another community, right? Florida or Edinburgh or Australia, ones that are practiced, and, and talk to them about how they're doing what they're doing in trade notes. Now, part of that is to seed your ideas, but part of that is to get you a face-to-face as close as we can, a visceral connection with a part of the community. So when you have a question, you already have somebody to go to and ask, right? So this is what we're doing. And, and, and we still have, we have to have a meeting, um, a global annual meeting, because all of the data, all the experiences say, you got you got to get to get together face to face sometime. So we did a big meeting in Vienna last year and we couldn't get the, Australians over, it was too far. We got uh, some Chileans over, but not the Argentinians. This year we're suffering. We still can't get the, the, the Australians, so we're gonna do it in, in Florida this year, Orlando, at the time of the big Agile conference. And then next year we're gonna have to go find a way to get, right? So you do the face-to-face. -face. So anyway, those are the elements we're doing in, in Heart of Agile. And Georgie's been patiently waiting, just so you know. I don't see him. With, with his hand up. <laughs> Hi. So, uh, what I've been doing with uh, with uh, with a couple of my teams, and as Alistair said, what we were doing as a group was um, the words. For me, the words stay the same. It's just the way we. You disappeared there, Georgie. Yeah my connection got dropped. So you see the, the way of interaction changes, the challenges are different because of the remote work, but we try to emulate our behavior. Like um, the, the thing that one of my team does, we, we just uh, narrate what's going on. 
hey guys, I'm leaving to get something. Hey guys, I went out to get something from the store and stuff like that. And also we over communicate about sharing shared resources. Hey, I'm killing the job and the procedure here and there. So that's one big part of it. Anything that would be visually there, we just do it and just uh, send a Snapchat to our Slack channel or just uh, record a short video. And then Alistair has a talk about levels of communication. And you know, you have from two people at the whiteboard all the way to a document. So we just try to find what's good for that interaction. And we, for one thing, we will have an escalation process, like two people on a chat, and then they skip to a call, they skip to a Zoom, they do recording, they send it to everyone. And depending on what level of communication you need, you will switch the technology behind that. So there are small things like that. The other one is, if it's an interaction, we go for the best available. So if I can travel to see Sole in, you know, when it's not quarantine time, but I cannot see Sole and Alistair, I just hop on a plane, go see Sole, and then we call Alistair on a call. And now it would be kind of the same. So everybody that can hop on a video call, we do it. Otherwise, we just send info to the chat and say, we will avail be available to repeat this meeting with you later. Okay, so I want to sharpen the question because it was such a good question. And if I was as I was in that position, I would still be missing some information. So Tony and Georgia specifically, um, that was nice like general technology, but if, if I'm a coach, if I'm a coach, I'm supposed to really be talking to somebody, right? Can you, and Sola also, anybody who's got some, help me with that part of it. Leave, uh, technology, okay, we got that. Now, now what about the coaching part? Can I give you a, a context example hmm. um, of the kind of things I'm thinking? So coaching a team um, that has a whip of one that is using single piece flow where they're working as a team, rem doing that remotely as a coach is really different if you have a team that has a high whip, for example. It's really difficult to coach a team that is not got a low whip and um, where there's lots of things going on at once. So I can give you two specific answers to that, and you tell me if it if it hits the if it hits where it should be. So one thing, one situation was um, if the team can't slow down and have this conversation online, it will not work. So if the team is constantly under, you know, high pressure or high demand or lots of things going on, then yeah, it's going to be difficult. It would be difficult even if it wasn't remote. So finding the time where they can actually video with you and have these talks and break down and it's time where they stop working to reflect, that's going to be the main piece. And the other piece of answer I got is I was actually trying to coach a girl about coaching. She, she's new on my team and we needed to coach her about coaching other people and everything's remote. So what I did was jump on a call with her and she first narrates the experience for me, what, what was going on. And then we tried to do a round of abstract. So now I say, now you don't tell me a story, what happened. Now you give me the abstract of you looking at your story. And then, if available, we will even record her giving the talk, or I can shadow her if her team is willing for me to join her on that call. And then we'll step away from that and then look at the recording of her telling the story and then try to pinpoint the learning objectives there. Anything you want to add, Tony? Sorry, I was muted. I couldn't get off. <laughs> no, look, I, I totally agree with that. And the one-on-one -on -one time, uh, Georgie was saying, the one-on-one -on -one time is the real, the real important thing for me, because it's easy to just group broadcast. But if you're coaching, it's that one-on-one -on -one moment time with the people. So go out of your way. And I know it takes a lot more time when you've got more teams, but it's just the diamond in the rough. It's the value that you get when they can actually just riff off you. It's like talking to Alistair, right? You can talk to him in this group session, but I can tell you from experience, spending half an hour with him, just riffing backwards and forwards and bouncing your ideas. Nine times out of 10, they know the answer. 
your team actually knows or the person you're coaching, they, they just need to be able to riff off somebody and come back to you or they know that perhaps what they're not doing is not the right thing, but they're not quite sure how to do the right the right thing. So that, that would be my answer. Guys, it's 11.50 uh, here. Um, I'd like to see if we get one more question before we're going to do a reflect, like what did you learn out of this kind of a thing? Uh, any one more question? That was a great one. I think we should all wave to Rob's daughter. Yes. <laughs> I think we should also wave to Lucy's cat. I've been. Yes, I love that. I, I can't manage the controls enough to like write side channel stuff. So. Hi, Rob's daughter, Lucy's cat. So cute. <laughs> Thank you. Alejandro. Hey, que bueno. I see some new people coming on that I recognize. Federico Supa in, in Buenos Aires. Uh, Lee. Hola. Lee Clo, you, how do you pronounce your name? Tell us your name, please. Take it off mute. Lay Clough. Lay Clough, and, and she's now in Seattle, used to be in Melbourne, right? Yes, that's right. I've Welcome. organized meet up uh, quite a bit in Melbourne, but very new in Seattle now. Wow, separate topic for another time. We have Prashant in Tampa, Ricardo, Ricardo Navarro, where are you calling from? Panama. From Panama. Oh, Panama. Panama. Also here. Hiro yeah, Hiroshi, si. where are you calling from? Hi, how are you doing? Uh, I'm in Lima right now. You where? In Lima. Lima, Peru. Mike Kuhn, where are you calling from? You're on mute, man. I know, I was trying to use push to talk, but uh, I'm in Pike Road, Alabama. Alabama, wow. Manuel Olguin. Donde sos? Hi, Hi. how are you, Alistair? Yeah. <laughs> I'm from Chile, I'm a colleague from Agustin. Ah, very That's cool, right. very cool. All right, hello, anybody. One, one more question, let's try one more question, if anybody has one. And we'll curious this is Scott McClellan from Raleigh. Um, I have a bigger coin kind of question, maybe too long for the time here, but um, I was already thinking with, with Carol a little bit about it. But if we've already got an established meetup group in an area, you know, what's the best way to kind of bring some of the HOA stuff to, to that group? Super. Um, I'm glad you bring that one up, and it's a nice short one that we can use. Um, we're, we're very much in sort of the non-jealous uh, category, obviously, you know, given the values and all the rest of it. So uh, as far as I'm concerned, there's no need to start a competing meetup. We try to avoid that. Uh, if I were doing it, I would just take it as a theme. Hey, let's do it this month. There's this thing called Heart of Agile. Discuss it any way you want. And if they like it, then you put it on, you know, periodically, let's say every third or fourth time. And you just do thematically, right? So what is it? How can we use it in the group? What are the people's experiences? How does it fit with other methods? What other? But that way you don't have to start up. You don't have to spin up a whole new group. You don't have to generate, you know, competing agile communities. Uh, they did um, this in, in Scotland. And I'm happy to help anybody that wants to start setting them up. Um, I know that somebody from, let me see, from Seattle was asking about it. I think that what's going to happen, I don't think we'll necessarily go back to the old normal but i think that the virtual stuff that we've done and that um different places have done especially like edinburgh um melbourne some of the linkedin stuff that's happened not linkedin linkedin but linkedin in terms of zoom um join-ins i think that's going to increase and i think that what we're doing today is essentially um what i see is almost part of the new normal for going forward and getting people together mm -hmm. that are in in disparate faraway places and that are that are close yeah. i think this has been awesome cool so is it something that we can bring in some of the coaches or something like that in a session like this to the larger Absolutely. organization then and present Absolutely. or something like that and i'll tell you what we did in tampa and in terms of we have two different models and I'll, I'll coach you through that no problem 
And I just, I want to show everybody the, um, the shirt that I'm wearing actually, which um, Alistair brought back from RBS in Scotland. You have to stand up a little bit. Can you stand? We can, there you go. Is that better? Yeah. That's the Celtic knot version <laughs> of the Heart of Agile logo done by, by Tony Christie. Now I wore this in public the other day and somebody said, I can ask you anything. And it was at a, at a grocery <laughs> store. And I thought, no, I am not an epidemiologist, not like everybody else in the world, but I'm not an epidemiologist, but you can ask me about groceries or beer or planting. So one of my colleagues was wearing that on the way to an event because I work, work at RBS and um, someone came up to him and said, can I ask you anything? And he's like, yeah. And he says, are you a virgin? <laughs> it was just, oh my God. So yeah, we've changed the wording now. <laughs> well, it doesn't say your answer. I want to add to what Alistair was saying. Uh, it was Scott's question, I believe, not sure. Uh, I actually tried the model for three months where I didn't host Heart of Agile meetups, but it was like a caravan. I just traveled from other meetups already set up in Serbia and just joined as one of the speakers on the meetup. And I said like, okay, I would like to talk about these topics. Which ones of them would you like? And then they picked one and I wanted also from one of the hosts that the host the original meetup that have a similar or joint discussion. So without setting up a new time, new meetup, I just traveled from one meetup to another. Uh, it was three or four, uh, three or four instances, and just added to what what's already there. Reach right. out to us as well. Reach out to the rest of us. We're always happy to zoom in. I've, I've, where I couldn't zoom Alistair, I recorded him much to his disdain and use that as, as a preemptor as well. So the communities here, any, we're, we're all happy to help you kick any meet up anywhere we can. So any of the speakers and coaches on the HOA site, basically? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and you'll Great. see Thank the you. list, the list of emails uh, down here, but yeah, that's correct. Now, Sean Thanks, Cowan, everybody. Appreciate that. Sean Cowan asked if um, he could get a copy of the recording of this and would like to share it with the rest of the coaches here at Booking. And it's going to be, I just asked Soli, it's going to be public on YouTube. And so anybody that wants to share the recording, that'll be great. Thank you. As we, we start the wind down, um, I want to bookmark two things we didn't talk about uh, that are in the questions. Uh, the first is, um, we are going to expand out a teaching model, uh, and I just want to say just a word about that. Um, the, the whole thing about certificates is fraught with peril, um, and I helped create the International Consortium for Agile, which is a, nothing but a certificate, certification body or certificates producing a body, so I've been down this path before 10 years ago. Um, and my, my reading is that the thing that poisoned the well because the well has been poisoned, was that the certified scrum master is a certification to a qualified role, right? You are a certified X, where X is a role name. That's the poison. So that's what we want to avoid. If you, if you stay away from that, certificates in the olden days had a value. You know, you went to a course for two days, you got a certificate for completing a course, you needed that for, you know, for your HR, for your promotions, for your education record. It was, it's, it's a valuable thing. It's necessary. It's fine. It's not a problem. You know, I used to give courses for use cases and whatnot and whatnot. The thing that was bad was, was that caused the inflation was saying, a, I, I am now a, I went to two day class. I am now a certified scrum master. And then, you know, and then we get the plethora, the certified product owner, certified coach, a certified this, a certified that. So the thing to avoid is just saying, uh, right? So if we do that, and the other thing that's problematic in the Scrum community is they have 300 plus people teaching the same curriculum, all, all fighting each other to, to teach a certified Scrum Master class and that market saturates, is saturating. So those are the two errors. So if we get away from those two errors and we look at, at just like the fact that someone took a course as a, as a meaningful, certificate to own um, and we take a look at the heart of agile we don't need 300 people teaching the heart of agile four words but each of the four words contains a whole university behind it so for instance inside of deliver 
you can drop all of Lean Kanban University just inside the internal aspects of delivering, right? You get all of Lean Kanban. The whole Lean Kanban University just fits right in this, drop it in there. You get all of the modern product management feedback stuff, Melissa Perry, Teresa Torres, in the deliver for learning aspect of the delivery. You get all of, all of clean language and solution focus inside the reflect and improve portions. You get um, uh, HR people who teach about how to, how to facilitate, how to offer cri criticism, you know, feedback, how to absorb criticism, all of that. So, so basically there's like an infinite number of courses available, uh, techniques, um, that fit behind these four words. And so the model is this, that we are going to have um, a special like level, certificate level K, what the hell does K mean? I don't know, but it's a letter, um, where anybody could, could teach a course that, that we, like pretty much any course literally could fit behind the four words. What we'll look for is what are the personality characteristics of the teacher? Do they know about, enough about how to agile can they teach? So we could have, a, we could have a offering constructive criticism, course taught by somebody we could have a clean language course taught by somebody we'd have a kanban course taught by somebody right all of these things uh course taught by somebody and then and then we can set up a whole like fundamentally basically a whole university kind of a thing we could have 300 people not stepping on each other's toes um, and so a little bit the, the the question is how do we make it so people feel free to take lots of courses from you know on lots of topics the problem is now in the, in, the, in the product owner, when, when I was a certified product owner trainer, we had a problem. I wanted people to take the course from Jeff Patton and from me and from somebody else. And because we're non-overlapping, it's a, it's a profession. It's a, you know, you've got years of study to do. And so the way we're gonna go is that there will be, um, and currently we're just limited literally by the fact that um, we can't generate certificates automatically off of our website. So you need that thing smooth, you know, upload, send out certificates. But that's the path we're going to take. So if any of you have interest, stay tuned on that. As soon as we get the technology stack, you know, figured out, we can go through this. And we also don't know how to interview people for personality, but for instructors, it's less damaging than for consultants and so on. So, so Alistair, can I interrupt you? Um, we're now at 12.03 Eastern Daylight Time, and yep. I know it's probably 3 a.m. for Tony, who's kind of almost nodding right off, and um, Kate. Kate did do some major yawning, so, so I'm glad you're still with us, Kate. Um, if everybody can kind of bear with us for 10 minutes, and yep. Alistair, you want to just follow up, and we're going to do this again next week? So let's, right, so let's go down the end of session. Um, Reflection. Uh, so let's do this like we did the, the opening. Uh, what I'd like to hear is uh, what you liked or what you learned about this session. Can we just have, you can type it in the, in the Google Doc, but I'd like to have some people say it out loud. Either what you liked or what you learned about this session. Can I start? Uh, I liked everyone being super mindful and not talking over each other and uh, respecting and listening. Huge like. And what I learned is people were very high energy so we can crank this up a couple of notches, more activity and everything else. Somebody else? Yeah. Um, what I liked is uh, you reminded me of the check-in protocol, so I'm glad to uh, to reuse that <laughs> very soon <laughs> to try it. And uh, I've learned uh, how to to run a group without room, a uh, very simple thing, and a Google Doc for a very simple collaboration. So I learned that. That's simple. Thanks. Uh, one of the things that I learned was, um, Alistair, your, your, your answer, presence and awareness, I think really summarized for me some of the things that we need to be doing at Booking if we're going to remote coach effectively. Um, and some of the other answers, um, they validated some of the things that we're already thinking, and I think they added a few things to it. Um, so we should be able to apply that, and that's been really helpful. Thank you. 
Um, and by the way, we do this at the end of every meeting I've ever been in for the last 20 years. So if you're new here, if you ever come to one of our sessions, we normally do a full round robin where everybody has to say, like, if we do this in person, you can't leave the room till you say what you learned. Because if you came here for an hour and you didn't learn anything, then it was a waste of time. Um, and so maybe it's a good idea when you, when you get an aha in the middle that you write it down because sometimes like we literally call on people and say, what did you learn? Like, otherwise, why did you bother to come here? Are there any others who want to volunteer? So what I liked was uh, seeing people that I haven't seen in a while, uh, getting to speak to you guys. Uh, what I learned, so I've been learning about graphic recording and sketch noting. So I've learned a bit of that whilst I've been doing this. I've had a little go, drawing some shit. Um, care to post that in the Google Doc, please? Take a picture sure. of something, put it in the Google Doc. Thank you. No worries. One more and then we'll do, yes please, George. So what I learned is that uh, your vision of Heart of Agile is more open than, than I had imagined it was. And that excites me. Um, and I can, you know, I can see where a lot of the, the uh, satire stuff I've been studying fits into here also. Bring it, man, bring it. Hey guys, so um, the last thing which I don't need to do um, out loud, but if you'll be so kind and look at uh, the last two bits of the of the Google Doc. Part seven says topics I would like to hear next time. So that would be a good thing. And then this is our first time doing this. So uh, bright ideas for managing the space, right? So this was our, like, how do we make this work? We don't know how many people. This scaled to 40, no problem. The Zoom plus the Google Doc. If any of you have any bright ideas on what we could do, uh, next time to make it better, more interesting, whatever, uh, then that will be super. Is there anything else? Um, it, it, we're going to do this again. I'm unfortunately on the hook to do this in Spanish for Latin America, in which presumably I'm going to speak less because that's too painful for people to listen to. And yeah. um, also at a different time so we can get the Australians a more comfortable time like 9 a.m. or something, your time. Uh, so that's, I will publicize that. What about so if you just fill those things in the Google Doc. Anything else, Carol, Sole, that I need to, to pick up before we go? Scott, were you saying anything? I was going to say, why, for the next one, why don't we all uh, make a Art of Agile badge? It's like a, I've been doing a lot of craft work with my children this week. Why don't we all craft our own Heart of Agile badge and wear it? So, so Scott, I, I hear that. Um, and if, if I could convert that, I think it's an invitation for those who like to do craft stuff to do such a thing, and that'll be fun. And, and not at all an obligation for anybody, because I, oh, for, for sure. one, I'm not going to do it. Yeah, that so, was my suggestion. Any, yeah, anybody can pass, but that would be super cool uh, to do that. I'll wear the Scottish version. Yeah. By the way, um, Scott, if you'd be so kind and put that in on the Google Doc, if you have the link. So we'll see that. Otherwise, it's um, like 10 after. Should we do this uh, question? Um, while I've got this particular group here, last question. Uh, same time next week or different time or something? The time works. What about one hour earlier? Does one hour earlier not work for anybody. Put a thumbs down if one hour does not work earlier. We've got some thumbs down on that. So it might be the same time next week. Early is good. Earlier is good for Australians. The time right. good in Chile too. Okay. Hey, thank you much, everybody. Bye. 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 Stay well. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Adios. Ciao. Ciao. Gracias a